Hi everyone, it's Karen. I promised that I would make a video showing how I make sticker labels um, for use in various ways. And what I'm going to be showing you is a label that I make for the products that I sell in my shop. Last year I was using a certain design and I am changing that this year because I will be selling something completely different. I'm going to show you what I was using last year. I keep that in my library. I don't actually keep much in the library, but this is one of the designs that I do keep there. So I'm clicking on user designs and here is what I had been using. I'm going to open it up so you can see. All it is is a pretty floral with thank you in the middle and then I would cut it out with the circle and I would end up with 12 labels that I can use on my packages. What I would do is I would roll up vinyl and tissue paper and then I would secure the end of the tissue paper with this label and look quite cute. But this year I'll be doing something different. So I'm going to remove these and I'm going to go back to where I was to start from scratch so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so I have a an eight and a half by 11 page here. And I'm going to show you how you would change that if you had your regular settings. So in the page panel, you can choose your sizes. So I'm using a Cameo. I have Auto Cameo chosen as my machine. My cutting mat is 12 by 12 inches for that machine. And now my media, I can change. I could have it to be the Auto 12 by 12, which is the standard size for this mat or I can choose any of these and I can create my own. I'm going to choose the letter because that's what I'm using. And I'm going to turn on my registration marks, which is right over here on the right, so that I don't forget because I need registration marks if I'm going to use the print and cut function. I'm going to turn them on and now you'll see them on the screen over here. Okay, so I'm gonna go and find the image I want to use. I'm going to choose the command file merge because I want to bring it into this file that I already have set up. There's an EPS file, so I can use that. So I'm going to see about tracing this. To do that, I need to open up the tracing window and I'm going to choose select trace area. Draw a box around the image. And I need to get as much yellow as possible here. So I'm going to adjust the high pass filter quite high. I'm going to try threshold as well. This will probably work pretty well because what I really want to get is the outline of the total flower. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to trace. Let me pull the flower away and see. Now, if it weren't for this gap here, this outline would be working perfectly. So let me play around with that a bit again. I'm going to undo what I did. I'm going to adjust my trace area so that I'm not cutting it off over here. This is going to work perfectly now. So when I click trace and I pull away the flower, well, pull away the, the cutting line actually, I'm going to Pull this away for a minute and I'm going to release the compound path and then I'm going to be able to drag away the outline, leave all the junk behind and this square. I've selected all of it and I'm pressing delete. So all I'm left with is this outline that I can put my flower into and it will cut around it. The offset is a little bit further away from the flower than I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the internal offset to make that a little bit smaller. So I don't want it quite that much. That looks pretty good. I'm going to apply that. So now I have a second line there. I can pull away this I keep pulling away the flower because there's a square around it. So I'm going to take the outs, outer line and get rid of that and drag the flower back in. Okay, so I've dragged it so that the flower is pretty much in the middle of that offset line. Now I'm going to create my text. 
type the text first and then change it. So I'm going to go up to the top to where I see I frequently used and there's my text. Now I don't want an outline, I only want this to be in a dark grey. So I'm going to come and change my color to a dark grey. And I also need to change the color of the line. So I'll do that by clicking the line icon over here in the colors and then I'll choose the dark grey. So that my entire font is now dark grey. And because this is text, there's some space here. This is always the way it is with fonts. And I don't want that to interfere with what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to path so that this becomes um, a graphic image rather than text. I'm just going to make it a little bit larger and I'm going to rotate it. So to rotate an image, click the align icon over here, it's actually the transform panel, but you can see the alignment icon and the rotate icon is right here. So click that and I want to turn it counterclockwise. I'm going to do 90 degrees and then drag this over here, but it is a little bit too big. It's a bit bigger than my flower. So I'm going to shrink that down. I need to group these pieces. So I'm going to right click and group after selecting them all. Then when I move them, they all move together. And I'm thinking my flower is a little bit too big anyway. So I'll adjust the text a little bit as well. And I'm going to align them in the middle vertically so that they look nice together and I'm thinking the text could be a little bit bigger. So these are all the steps you go through designing your image. So I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to group it so that I can size it all together so that I can get approximately what I want which would be the 12 labels on my page, maybe just a little bit smaller. So now what I need to do is I want to create an outline or an offset, I should say, that will go, I'm going to ungroup my text here because I actually want to drag it away from the flower a little bit. It's a little bit too close. So I'm going to create an offset of my text. In this case, I'm going to choose the offset because I want it to be on the outside of my letters. I don't want it to be this far away from the letters. And you can zoom in to see what you're working on more closely. That's looking pretty good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take away all these little pieces because I don't want all of those to cut in my labels. So I'm going to right click, release the compound path, then I can go in and just click and delete these pieces that I don't want. Now you can see there's an offset all around the word, but not inside any of my letters. So I'm going to bring my flower close again. So I'm going to choose around the flower, I'm going to choose the offset on my text right click and weld. That has now welded those two pieces of offset together. Again, I'm going to right click and release the compound path. I haven't selected the right thing. Right click and release the compound path so I can remove that little bit in there. I'm going to move away the text. And I'm going to move away the flower because it keeps interfering right now. Select this and delete it. And I believe there's another little bit here. And I think that's it. So then I can move the flower back into place. 
and I can I can move my text back into place and everything aligns very nicely. Now I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to select all of this, right click and group it so that whatever happens now when I move it, everything moves properly together. I'm going to select it now and I'm going to move it where I want it on my page. And I'm going to now replicate and fill the page with this design. And we'll see how many we get. I end up with eight. So that's pretty good. So this is now ready to print and cut. I'm going to send it to my printer, show you what that looks like, and then I'm going to cut it out with my Cameo and show you what that looks like. I just click my print icon and I'm going to print it to my 7700 printer, which already has labels in it. I click print and that's going to print it out on my printer. I just wanted to show you the result I got when I printed earlier. So I had to stop my video um, and do some maintenance by cleaning the print heads on my printer. I did that and then I printed out a test and you can see how much of a difference that made. So now I'm ready to send to my cutter. I'm clicking the send button. Now you see that there's a whole lot of red in here and that's a mistake. I don't want that. That would mean that all of my letters are cutting. So I need to go back to my design screen. I need to select each of these and ungroup them. Now that I've placed them all, it doesn't really matter about ungrouping them because I'm not going to be moving them around anymore. I want to see if I ungroup multiples, if it does that correctly, it seems it did. I'm going to select this word here. I'm going to press shift and click and select this word. Do the same thing here, except that that's selected more. You see here, this bounding box is there. So that means that all of this is not ungrouped. Oh, it appears to be ungrouped. So let me see again. Yeah, it is fine. I just needed to select only the word. There, there, and there. You can always see what you're selecting by what is enclosed in a bounding box. So now that I have those four words selected, I'm going to click send. I'm going to click no cut. They're going to turn gray. And now I'm all set to go. My file has printed, it's in my Cameo, and I can send it to the cutter. You're going to hear my cutter going in the background, but that's because I made a mistake earlier and I forgot to turn on the video for this part of the um, tutorial. What I did is I chose my material. I'm using planner stickers. It's actually a material I created myself. And the settings are already in here. The only thing is I increased the speed to 30 because since only these red lines are going to cut, it's not very complicated. So it's fine to have a speed of 30. And then all I did is I sent it to my machine and you can see over here that it's cutting right now. So I'm going to send this to the cutter now. You can see that my cameo is ready over here and I'm going to click send. <laughs> It's recognizing the registration marks and now it's going to start cutting. I have sped up this section where the cameo is cutting out my shapes. So you should be able to see from here, let me turn it the right way, that the cut lines are exactly where they're supposed to be. on all of my items. And I'm very lucky with my Cameo for it. I hear a lot of people have had trouble with this. So now if I pull away one of these stickers, it's ready to put on my package like this. 
So I hope this has been helpful to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future tutorials. And thanks so much for watching.